Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker and today's video is a continuation of my NBA season preview series for the 2019-20 NBA season and this one covers the New Orleans Pelicans. The Pelicans finished with a 33-49 record last season in a season that was largely about the Anthony Davis trade request, at least from around the All-Star break on. But with Davis now gone and a lot of exciting new young players on this roster, they can now focus on the future and not so much on the saga and on the drama of the Davis situation and potentially build one of the best young teams in the entire league over the next few seasons. But first, let's review their offseason and there are a lot of additions here, so I'm going to attempt to go through this relatively quickly. The first one is obviously the number one overall pick in the draft, Zion Williamson. And you guys already know all about Zion. Some people are kind of starting to go against, you know, him being so good. And some people are kind of trying to be different and say, oh, I don't know if Zion's actually going to be that good. He's going to be incredible. Nothing up to this point in his career has shown us that he's going to be anything less than amazing in the NBA. Maybe initially it won't translate into like an all-star appearance as a rookie or anything, but he's going to be one of the rookie of the year favorites. Such an outstanding athlete. Showed a lot of skills specifically as a passer at Duke. As long as he at least is, is at least a average three-point shooter, he's going to be awesome. There's not a whole lot of points of talking about him a ton. The next edition is going to be another draft pick for the Pelicans and a draft in which they had many, and that is Jackson Hayes. And this is really, really interesting and I'm going to talk about him later because I just kind of assumed that this was maybe going to go to a backward spot given how the Pelicans roster looked at the time of the draft and the fact that I really wanted to see Zion obviously as like a four kind of combo forward but also I wanted to see Zion as a small ball five but then they invested in Jackson Hayes as a five man and actually had some really good moments uh, in the summer league and has shown some flashes and things like that to certainly be excited about. He's an outstanding athlete, someone that's going to be able to protect the rim, run to the rim, finish around the basket, things like that. And it's going to be really exciting to see him and Zion play together in the front court. Now, long term fit wise is going to depend on Zion's ability to space the floor and to play on the perimeter, maybe more than you are expecting him to initially because Hayes is obviously going to be spending a lot of time in the paint. But just as a high upside pick I do like the addition of Jackson Hayes and he's definitely going to be someone to watch next up another drafted player Nikhil Alexander Walker and this is a backcourt player a combo card that can score the ball pretty well and is someone that kind of flew under the radar during the draft process but I like this addition for the Pelicans they obviously got guys like JJ Redick who I'll talk about a little bit later in the additions to help them in a more immediate sense in the backcourt but as a longer term as more of a project player Alexander Walker is a score is a combo guard is a shooter is a really really interesting pick for the Pelicans and again someone that I like them bringing in in a draft class that obviously was very, very good for them. Next up is going to be a couple of those guys that they got in the Anthony Davis trade. Got Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, and Josh Hart. Those three guys, we know what they look like in LA. Hart looked like an at times good rotation player and at other times didn't really look like he should be in the rotation. Ball, good defender, good playmaker, shooting and offense overall in terms of scoring has been a bit of a struggle for him. Had some injuries last year. Should fit in pretty well with this Pelicans team just because there are a good amount of guys that can score the ball that he can pass to and play make and not be relied on so much to score. It's just going to come down to whether or not he's actually going to end up being a good shooter and then continuing to progress as a defender because that's when been one of the most surprising things that's been a positive for him at the NBA level is his strength as a defender. And then there's Brandon Ingram who is actually in a contract year. He's a restricted free agent in the 2020 offseason and his fit with this team is going to be really interesting to watch because you've got Zion, you've got Drew Holiday, you've got Jackson Hayes, you've got JJ Redick, you've got all these other guys that are going to be able to score the ball, that are going to want the ball in their hands, a good amount specifically Zion and then Drew Holiday. So how does Brandon Ingram fit in there? How well does he kind of mesh with the team in terms of not needing the ball in his hands a ton? Because that was the story for him in his first couple of seasons in LA. He really needed the basketball to be effective. And then once LeBron came last year, that obviously wasn't as much of an opportunity for him to be a playmaker. So how well does he fit with this team is certainly going to be something to watch. Ideally, he would turn into more of a complimentary 3 and D kind of wing scorer defender type player for this team, assuming that Zion is going to be as good as we think he is. And then, like I said, they've got Holiday and some other good cards ball as well. So that would be kind of the ideal fit for him long-term, but I just don't know if that's a role that he's really going to be able to fill for this team. So he is definitely someone interesting to watch. And then, like I said, ball and heart as well. Then you get to their two bigger free agency acquisitions, the first one being JJ Redick, who committed to the Pelicans relatively early on in the process and this was the first sign that they were really planning on pushing for the playoffs potentially in the Western Conference's upcoming season. They weren't content with just having this really exciting young team but bringing in someone like JJ Redick is obviously great from a mentorship standpoint for the younger players that they have on the roster. A very good shooter but again just someone that kind of completes their team a little bit 
it and helps them in an immediate sense in addition to obviously having Holiday and the young guys and Zion and things like that. So that was really the first sign that we got, wow, like the Pelicans are actually gonna try and make something happen this year relatively immediately. I do like the move. And then the other one kind of under the radar as well is that they brought in Derek Favors to provide them some front court depth. Again, good from a mentorship standpoint for guys like Hayes and Zion Williamson. And now we move on to the subtractions. And the first one obviously is Anthony Davis. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time here talking about him. You guys all know what Anthony Davis is about. I do obviously think that it's a good thing that the whole drama and saga of his trade request is now gone. They don't have to deal with that and they can fully move on and move on with a stockpile of assets, some good young players, and then obviously Zion and Hayes, and Hayes as well, in addition to the players they got in the trade request. It's gonna be a huge loss for them from a player standpoint, obviously losing Anthony Davis, but they got all these other pieces and now they can just fully move on. The other player is Julius Randle in terms of big subtractions from this team, ended up going to the Knicks. Had a really good statistical season last year for the Pelicans on a pretty cheap deal because he ended up leaving the Lakers for a variety of different reasons. Um, but there wasn't necessarily a ton of evidence that he was helping this team a ton in terms of winning games. But again, statistically in a up-tempo, fast-paced system with Alvin Gentry was very, very good from a statistical standpoint. And that got him his big contract in New York. But I'm not mad at them for not bringing him back, especially obviously knowing now that they have Zion because those two probably would have clashed in terms of play styles a little bit. So they're going to miss him, but they've got players now to replace him and move on from Julius Randle. The other two are Solomon Hill, who they moved in a salary dump, and then Alfred Payton as well, who ended up uh, leaving in free agency. And the only thing there with Payton is that kind of prevents them from having Drew Holiday as a two, uh, unless Lonzo Ball is going to be on the floor at the same time as Holiday, which I'll get to in the depth chart a little bit. But that was really the, the reason they brought in Alfred Payton in the first place was to play the one, so Drew Holiday could play the two, um, but that's really not a huge loss for them, again, because they brought in Lonzo Ball. And now, as I mentioned, we get to the depth chart. And before I even unveil this, uh, just keep in mind that this is very, very in flux, as are all of these starting lineups and these depth charts that I put together. This isn't necessarily the best lineup that the Pelicans can put on the floor. This is just how I feel like their depth chart best fits together position by position, even though there are some lineups that they could put together that would potentially be better. This one, again, it just, it just looks the cleanest. It's the best way that their depth chart can fit together, in my opinion. You've got Drew Holiday at the one, JJ Redick at the two, then Ingram, Williamson, and Okafor. I'll talk about the five spot later. And then off the bench, you've got Ball, Moore, Hart, Miller, Favors, and Hayes. And things that I like here is that they are at least two deep with legitimate good NBA players at every single position. And they have a good mix of veterans and and younger guys as well. Like they've got Redick and they've got Holiday and then they've got all these younger players as well. And again, the depth is incredibly important here and incredibly impressive as well for the Pelicans, which you would expect given how much they got in return for Anthony Davis. They got the three players, they got draft picks, things like that. And then moving forward, they're going to have even more ammunition to add to this team, which makes them one of the more exciting teams over the next couple, next couple of seasons. But specifically for this year, like I said, you could definitely change this around. As you start in the backcourt, it wouldn't be surprising at all to see Lonzo Ball start the year at the one, then Drew Holiday at the two, because Holiday has moved to being more of a two over the last couple of seasons. That's completely understandable. Having JJ Reddick come off the bench, all that stuff, like you, you can definitely make that case. I just wanted to put Ball on the bench because that gives him a legitimate backup point guard. But again, you can kind of mess with that however you want. And then the other interesting spot here is going to be the five spot, because I do have Jaleel Okafor as the starting five, only because Jackson Hayes is a rookie and Okafor has experienced experienced a bit of a resurgence in New Orleans as of late. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised at all if Hayes either starts the year at the five or ends up being the starting five for most of the year. But again, just for now, I ended up putting Okafor there. And you can even put Derek Favors as potentially the starting five as well. But again, it just kind of made a little bit more sense to me from a depth chart standpoint to put Favors as the backup four and then Okafor and Hayes at the five. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, I was really hoping to see Zion at the five more, but the investment in Hayes and, and the draft pick, such a high draft pick getting someone at the five spot shows it. That's not something they're necessarily committed to super long term. And the position for Williamson, you can kind of vary however you want to put him there. He's obviously a very multi positional player. I'm really hoping to see some Zion at the five spot, but they do have depth at that position. So maybe we won't see it a ton. But in my opinion, they'd be crazy not to at least try it in the modern NBA, the way that the game is. So many teams playing small. I'm imagining we're going to see Zion at the five some, maybe not a ton initially because it might not be great for his development or they don't want him to get hurt, banging the paint and things like that. But again, the five spot is a really, really intriguing thing for this Pelicans team to keep an eye on. Speaking of things to keep an eye on, we move on now to the players to watch section. And the first one for me is definitely Lonzo Ball. 
and he's in a really good situation here to end up really propelling his career into into a new step into an into a new part of his career now moving forward he's got a great mentor in Drew Holiday someone that can really teach him how to be a good guard a good point guard potentially uh, in the NBA and for Ball this is what I would caution against I would caution against some kind of huge breakout year for him and it's probably more than likely going to be baby steps over the next two seasons before his rookie contract is up I don't think he's going to suddenly be like a 15 and 12 guy and a really good defender of this Pelicans team because they do have such great depth but I think this is a much better situation for him to grow his game than whatever was going on in a, in LA last year even LA in his rookie year he gets away from all that stuff he gets to go to a place where he has a good mentor definitely keep an eye on him again not necessarily a huge breakout season for him given all of their depth but he should certainly improve this year in my opinion and then the other guy that we're going to look at is Jackson Hayes who I've mentioned a little bit and I just I really like the potential and, and how exciting this front court could potentially be with Zion and Hayes I question the fit slightly depending on how well Zion can space the floor in the NBA but like I said Hayes has loads of potential he's an outstanding athlete and that is a incredibly incredibly interesting and high ceiling front court combination potentially with him and Zion at the four and five and then the last thing that I would put here in terms of things to watch is the potential depending on how their season goes for a Drew Holiday trade to still be in play now I love I know that the Pelicans organization loves Drew Holiday they don't really want to trade him but depending on how their season goes it would make sense for them to at least explore the option if they're not pushing for the playoffs like they thought that they would be to trade Drew Holiday because I think a lot of teams are going to be interested in him because he fits in pretty much anywhere if you wanted to be a point guard he can do that if you want him to be a two he can do that he's such a good two-way player good playmaker can shoot can score can can play make as I said and again a good defender so I wouldn't be shocked at all if a lot of teams are calling about Drew Holiday somewhere around the trade deadline if the Pelicans don't have have as good of a season as they're hoping that they will again in a season that is going to be relatively wide open in terms of title contenders Drew Holiday could make a huge difference on a title contending team so just keep an eye on that I'm not necessarily saying that it's a guarantee or that it's likely to happen just saying keep an eye on moving on now to expectations and this is this is kind of a tricky one so in my opinion if the young guys play well for the Pelicans this team has legitimate playoff talent and depth. Like I wouldn't call you crazy if you said that your expectation was what was that the Pelicans would make the playoffs or push for the playoffs this season. That's not a crazy take at all. But I also think that it's possible, given how deep this conference is, that they end up with like a bottom four record in the Western Conference and they trade away Drew Holiday, depending on how the beginning of their season goes. Their expectations can be all over the place, but I do think it's legitimate to expect them to potentially push for the playoffs. However, unfortunately for me, in terms of my own prediction, I have them between 33 to 37 wins and not making the playoffs. And here's the reason why. The Western Conference is just so good. Like we've already talked about this with the Kings pre season preview and the Spurs season preview. There are so many good teams. There are like 10, 11 legit playoff teams in the Western Conference. And the Pelicans, in my opinion, are one of those. But everybody can't win 45 games in the Western Conference. Like in the East, this is an easy playoff team from a talent perspective. But they just, they just don't have enough top tier star power. They just aren't a good enough team, in my opinion, to push into the top eight. And I, I mean, you could certainly make a case that like if the young guys play well and if Zion is insane from the very beginning, then yes, it's possible that they could make the playoffs, but that's not going to be my own personal prediction. I love their depth. I love their their youth. I love the veterans that they brought in uh, or the veterans that they brought in like Reddick and, and Favors and obviously having Holiday still there as well. I'm just not all the way there on this Pelicans team, but if you are, that's completely fine. They're going to be one of the most exciting teams to watch. They're going to be very very high up in my own personal league pass rankings as a team that when they're playing I'm going to want to watch them but in terms of win loss actually making the playoffs I don't have the Pelicans in the Western Conference playoffs personally and there you have it that is going to be the end of today's video and I thank you all very much for watching once again my name is Tucker if you missed any of my previous videos then be sure to check out the boxes on screen thanks again and I'll see you all next time